Hi everyone and welcome to another Intro to Signal Analysis video. Today's topic is discrete time convolution. As I hope you remember from class, convolution is used to compute the output of an LTI system given the input x of n and the system impulse response h of n. It's really important to emphasize that the system has to be linear and time invariant in order to use the convolution sum. So if the system is not LTI, you can't use convolution. Up here I've written two forms of the convolution sum. The first says that the output y of n is equal to the infinite sum of h of k times x of n minus k. The other version of the summation writes it as the infinite sum of x of k h of n minus k. The reason we have these two different forms of the summation is that convolution is a commutative operation. So you can reverse the roles of the input and the impulse response, meaning reverse the roles of h and x, and you get the same exact output. So let's see an example of using convolution to, to determine the output of an LTI system. Okay, here's the example we want to implement. We want to calculate the convolution of the sequence x of n with the impulse response h of n, and these two sequences are shown here. Um, and so let's write out a form of the convolution sum that we're going to use. So we can write the convolution sum as the infinite sum over k, so k equal minus infinity to plus infinity. That should be a plus. Uh, of um, x of k, h of n minus k. So I've written out one of the forms of the convolution sum right here. Uh, and I've written it out in a form where what we're going to need to do the computation is the sequence x of k and the sequence h of n minus k. All right, so the sequence x of k is pretty easy to obtain. We have the sequence x of n. The sequence x of k, we just rewrite we just erase the n here and replace it with a k. And we erase the n here and replace that with k. So now we have x of k. All right, that's easy enough. Um, we also need to get uh, the sequence h of n minus k. Well, that's going to take us a couple of steps. So the first step is let's rewrite this and we'll draw it, have it as h of k. And so I'm just going to make this axis here the k axis as well. All right, so now I have sketches of x of k and h of k. But what I really need is h of n minus k. So my second intermediate step is to go ahead and draw um, the time-flipped version of h, meaning I'm going to draw h of minus k. And h of minus k, it's also a function of k, but now it's time reversed, so everything flips across the y-axis. So what I'm going to get is at 0, it'll be 0. At minus 1, it'll be 2. Minus 2, it'll be 2. Minus 3, it will be 2 and it's zero everywhere else. So all these other points are zero. Okay, so that is the time reversed version of this sequence. So this is h of k, this is h of minus k. I just flip all this stuff across the y-axis and I get this sequence. So I'm one step closer, but I really need h of n minus k. Now in terms of this summation, I'm summing over k, so n is just a parameter. It will just be, for a given value of the output that we're calculating, n is just a number. So if I'm calculating y at 1, n is equal to 1. All right, so there's an easy way to get from here to a sketch of h of n minus k. And that is quite simple to implement. And what I'm doing, I'm still sketching this as a function of k. I'm sketching h of n minus k. And all I do is I take this sequence and I move it to n. All right. So let's say n is here for the moment. n is there. So I'm just shifting this whole sequence over here 
so that it's so that the zero point shows up at n. So n is going to be zero. Everything to the right of n will be zero. Now to the left, by one point, I get two, 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 um, and that's at the points n minus one, n minus two, and this point here is at n minus three. And it's zero everywhere else, right? So all I did between here and here was I redrew this, and now wherever was zero before, now it shows up at n. And this is actually drawn for the case I've drawn it for um, n equal 1, because I've drawn it such that the n lines up with the 1 in the, in the upper plot, if I'm assuming both of these are on the same k-axis. All right, so now I have a sketch. I have a sketch of h of n minus k. So I have everything I need here to compute this um, summation. All right, so let me just summarize briefly what the steps are in calculating the convolution. First, we had to flip the sequence. We had to flip, which meant we need to find h of minus k. Then we had to shift to find whoops, h of n minus k. And then we're going to multiply as we go along. We're going to multiply x of k times h of n minus k. And finally, we're going to add up. We're going to sum x of k the sequence that we get by multiplying x of k and h of n minus k. So this is kind of our step one. That was step two, step three, and step four. And we have to um, repeat uh, two to four for all values of n that we care about. So if we want the output at zero, um, then we have to implement it for n equals zero, implement these three steps for n equals zero. If we want the output at one, then we go back and shift it so that it, n is one, and we go through these same steps, etc. Okay, so that's the basic set of steps, but I think it'll be easier as we implement it for this particular set of sequences. All right, so I've redrawn x of k and h of n minus k here. All right, so let's say... Um, that the first output I want to find, I want to find the output um, when n is equal to zero. So I'm going to find the output when n is equal to zero. So for the n equals zero case, I need to sketch h of zero minus k. Well, what is h of zero minus k going to look like? Well, I'm just going to look at this equation here, and now n is zero, so that's right there. So if n is 0, then this is the sequence I have. So that's at minus 1, that's at minus 2, that's at minus 3. It's 0 everywhere else. Okay, so now I have the two sequences I need. I'm going to multiply this sequence by this sequence and then add up the points. So y of 0 is equal to the sum over all k of x of k times h of 0 minus k. Well, what is h of 0 minus k? Well, I'm doing the point-by-point -point multiplication of this sequence with this sequence. So up here, it's 0 times 2. Then 0 times 2. 0 times 2. Thus far, it's all 0. This will be 1 times 0. This will be 2 times 0, 3 times 0, etc. So when I do this multiplication for this particular sequence, I get 0 here. So I'm adding up the sum over all k of 0, which is just 0. So the output at time 0, y of 0, is 0. All right, let's do another sketch. n is equal to 1. So now when n is equal to 1, now here's where 1 is. I'm just shifting 
this sequence over by one um, so that I, I have h of 1 minus k is what I'm sketching. And that'll be 0 at 1. It'll be 2 at 0, 2 at minus 1, 2 at minus 2, and 0 everywhere else. Okay, so this was just a simple shift from here to here. Whoops. So going from here to here, I just shifted to the right by 1. Okay, so now I'm going to do the point by point multiplication. Well, over here, I'm multiplying and I get all zeros. Um, and then the only non-zero point I'm going to get is I'm going to multiply um, 1 by 2, and I get 1 times 2. So I'm going to calculate doing my summation is y of 1 is equal to the sum over k, x of k times h of 1 minus k. I get 1 times 2, and that is a total of 2. So at the output at time 1 is equal to 2. Okay, that's all fine and good. All right, now um, I'm going to do another point, right? The next point, y of 2, is going to be the sum over k, x of k, h of 2 minus k. Well, now I'm just basically shifting this to, to the right by one more. So it'll look like this, 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 and this will be my, that'll be at minus 1, that's at 0, that's at 1 values, and this is h of 2 minus k. Okay, so if I do the summation here, I'm just doing the point, first the point by point multiplication, I'll get 1 times 2 plus 2 times 2. So that'll be 1 times 2 plus 2 times 2, and everywhere else that I multiply together, I just get zeros, so that doesn't really matter. So this will be equal to 2 plus 4, which is 6. Okay? All right, so let's go to the next page, because I'm already out of room here, and see if we can generalize this a bit. So I've started my sketch here, right? I've filled in the points that we have thus far. We calculated the point at 0, we calculated the point at 1, we calculated the point at 2, okay? Um, so we're going to keep going on. The first question is, well, what happens when n is less than 0, right? If n is less than 0, then this thing is shifted way over here, and whenever I do the point by point multiplication, I get all zeros. So as I move farther and farther left, I've got all zeros. Okay? It's also going to, as I move farther and farther right, I'm going to get to the point where the sequences are no longer going to overlap either, and it's going to go to zero again. And that's going to occur uh, the minute that n minus 3 is greater than 3. So if n minus 3 is greater than 3, that means n is greater than 6. So for all values greater than 6, we're going to get zeros. Because this sequence is going to be shifted way to the right. When I multiply the two together, I'm going to get zeros. So let's see if we can do the multiplications here, kind of in our, do the multiplications and then the additions in our head without having to draw each sequence. So we've already got these two values. So the next one is when n is equal to 3. Okay, when n is equal to 3, um, then, um, uh, then this lines up with 0. So it'll be 1 times 2 plus 2 times 2 plus 3 times 2. So 1 times 2 plus 2 times 2, that'll be 6, plus 3 times 2 um, uh, plus uh, 3 times 2 is going to be another 6. So that will be equal to 12. Okay, so um, we're getting a 12 there at 3. Whoops. I guess I should note that this plot here is, is actually on a different scale um, because I need, need a longer scale uh, vertically. Okay, so then I shift over one more. When n is equal to 4, then I've got... 2 times 2 
plus 3 times 2, um, that will be um, 4 plus 6, that's 10, plus 4 times 2, that's 18. So this point is 18. All right, now when n is equal to 5, when n is equal to 5, that means I'm lined up right here. Um, and so that term is 0, this term is 2, this term is 2. So I'll have 2 times 3, 2 times 4, 2 times 3 plus 2 times 4. So um, that is going to be 14. And finally, I have one more point here, and the last point is where n is equal to 6. When n is equal to 6, I'm shifted over here, and I only have one non-zero point overlap. It'll be 4 times 2, uh, and that'll be 8. And then as I go, um, as I go farther and farther to the right, I now have no overlap um, no non-zero overlap, and I just get all zeros out. Okay, so what I'm fundamentally doing, right, the equation I'm implementing is y of n is equal to the sum over k, x of k, h of n minus k. So I have this flipped and shifted version of h, and I'm just moving it along for each different value of n that I want, and then I multiply the two sequences together and add up the points in them. So this is the final answer for this question, um, and we went through a step-by-step -step procedure to get there. All right, so hopefully you have a better understanding of discrete time convolution now, and you can implement some on your own. I encourage you to give it uh, some practice. If you're interested in more information about the ECE 201 course or George Mason University or the ECE department, check out these websites. Thanks for listening.